by Jamie Davis here back at the American Association of Critical Care Nurses NTI 2013 conference. We're here in the physio control booth with Sue Tebow. She's a CRNA and she is here educating people about uh, better cardiac and critical care management of their patients. But Sue, first off, the question I always like to ask folks is, how did you become a nurse? Why did you decide to become a nurse? And what career path brought you to where you are today? That's a good question. Um, started way back when I was a EMT in high school and worked with the EMS agencies. And, and I always decided critical care and um, transport was my first love. And I says, I want to be a flight nurse. And that was my, my goal. So went to university, got my bachelor's degree, started in critical care right out of school, open heart, eventually did some emergency room, became a paramedic because that was a requirement, and flew critical care transport for seven years. And in that time also um, decided I wanted to do anesthesia. I still, I, I wanted an advanced practice, but I still wanted to have hands-on experience of actually taking care of a patient. And I liked the one-to-one -one ratio and the critical care nature of working in the operating room. So I became a certified registered nurse anesthetist. And then my other passion is education. So I spent a lot of time doing education for nurses at uh, venues like this. And I, I really enjoy it. I enjoy all aspects of it. Well, I can tell, and your, your session was uh, well attended and, and lots of interest in what you were talking about. Why don't you share with us uh, a little bit about what, what topic was and, and what you were hoping people would walk away from with it. Okay. My topic was on capnography. The name of the topic was entitled CO2 um, and don't let your patients turn blue was uh, my little uh, theme today. And I was educating nurses on the use of continuous capnography um, to monitor their patient's uh, respiratory status, monitor their airways, um, detect apnea very early or extubation very early, but also using capnography to determine return to spontaneous circulation um, or uh, patients that are imminent um, cardiogenic shock or, or failure, um, the monitoring with the CO2 for that. You know, it's interesting, uh, you know, in the pre-hospital setting and in anesthesia, capnography's been around for a while, but what, what do you think it is that makes nurses so uncomfortable with using this tool in, in some cases? I think it's a um, unfamiliarity. It's not been in the, the nurse's toolbox for very long. It's a relatively um, new technology to be widespread in hospitals. And you're right, it was, you know, paramedics are very comfortable with it. The operating room are very comfortable with it. But it's time to now expand. The AHA guidelines that came out in 2010 are really requiring the use um, widespread. But there's just an unfamiliarity with it. And there's always, there was always fear in the unknown. But I, I see that after the presentations, the light bulbs go off. And they see, oh, it's really not that complex of an issue. And if I could read an EKG, I could certainly read capnography readings and, and use it in my day-to-day -day practice. And that's what I'm empowering nurses to do, is go back to their facilities and really the, implement this for patient safety. And that's the key, is really to bring it into everyday practice. You can learn so many things at these events, but to be able to take them back and apply them really is what makes some of the education here special. Oh, absolutely. And based on the feedback that I've been getting from these talks, a lot of nurses are now saying, okay, I'm familiar with capnography. Give me the tools that I can bring back. And that's going to be my next talk, hopefully next year at the conference, is empowering nurses with the evidence-based practice, uh, the evidence guidelines, um, some legal cases that have shown that, you know, one patient death can buy capnography monitors for an entire hospital. And um, to equip them with tools that they can just very easily go home with and, and, and utilize for their own uh, use in getting capnography on the floors. Excellent. Well, Sue, um, I'm hoping to have you back on the show because I know you're an author as well, and yes. uh, we'll have you back in a future segment. But I definitely want to uh, thank you for being on The Nursing Show. Well, thank you for having me, and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. I've had I will. And I want to thank all of you for checking out the show, and make sure you continue to follow up on everything and all the segments from NTI 2013 over at nursingshow.com. And as always, remember to stay safe and stay tuned here to The Nursing Show. Take care. All our video segments here from NTI 2013 are brought to you through the generous support of Physio Control and their True CPR tool. It's a coaching and management tool for CPR. It gives you real-time feedback. It's simple to use, and it lets you perform high-quality compressions, giving you accurate depth measurement and accurate reporting on the compression fraction and the time on the chest. All of that brought to you by Physio Control. You can find out more information by heading over to physio-control.com and check out the new True CPR.